Mike check one two it's the y2k collector and i wanted to talk about a console really more so a handheld um that i've kind of mentioned on my channel before but someone in my comments and it's been crazy these past couple days so i'm gonna need the y2k crew to forgive me but someone in my comments asked me to do a video on the psp and honestly I want to say a couple things about the PSP before I go into like the games and, and, and some of the things that I want to say about it. First of all, I think if you're collecting or thinking about collecting retro games and, um, you know, consoles like the Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis or the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, like, you know, if any of like the mainline mainstream consoles are you, if you find that they're just too expensive, I think the PSP is almost like the perfect handheld to collect for because there's a ton of great content on this handheld device um it's it's a very it's a high quality device like the psp itself is just super high quality and um i feel like prices for this handheld system are just going down um they're not going up they're going down and which means like a lot of the games are just really affordable. And I think that um, you can definitely get, and this mine is so dirty because I've been like playing it. So it's all smudged and stuff. Um, it's a little gross actually, but um, there's a lot of great content that you can get on the PSP without having to break the bank. And I mean, just looking at the device itself, it's just a really top notch device um sound quality is great button placement is okay it's not the most comfortable handheld to use especially if you're playing like action games i'll, I'll say that um but for what it is it's a, it's a really cool device and it's not like you know you don't really feel like it's a kids kids game uh gaming console you feel like it's more of an adult console which is really what it was um at the time that this came out i remember um you know it had the whole um umv um which is basically like movies that you could watch on it um you know there was a lot that you could do with this you could connect to the internet it was really it was really cool um but i think that you know this was one of the um handhelds that lost a lot of steam at the start of the pandemic um just like all video games um when the pandemic really kicked off everything was inflated but the air got let out of the psp first in my opinion um and a lot of the games that were priced really really high have come down and a lot of the games that were ranging in the 40 and 50 zone are now like in the 20 you know 15 to 20 to maybe 25 max and that's just a great thing. That just means that you can get quality games in really great shape, complete in box, and have a really nice collection without having to break the bank. So um, that's just some of the first few things that I want to say about the PSP. Secondly, there are a lot of games that are more expensive on the PS2 that you can get for a better price on the PSP. Um, so it's another great way for you to experience games um, that might be too expensive on another console. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, some of the drawbacks on the PSP for me, um, and I already touched on this one, but it's form factor, right? Like I have somewhat bigger hands. So playing a PSP after a while does become like taxing on the fingers and on the joints um so it's not the most fun console to hold because it is very skinny and it's very it's very narrow so um that's that can be a challenge and then graphics wise um you know it's kind of like a cross between the playstation 2 and the playstation 1 i remember when it first came out because of how clear it was for its time a lot of people said that it had PlayStation 2 graphics, but I wouldn't quite say that the PSP has PlayStation 2 graphics. I would say it's like PlayStation 1.0, you know, like or 1.5. I don't know what to say. 1.0. I'm tired. Forgive me. So that's those are just some of like the, the minor drawbacks. Um, the other thing that I that I kind of didn't really like too much about the PSP is that it's a very RPG heavy um, handheld 
meaning like a lot of the games that came out for the PSP were very it was like it was a lot of RPGs. So if you're a fan of RPGs, then this is the handheld for you. Um I can take an RPG every once in a while. I just hate games that take forever to get into. You got to watch a ton of cutscenes and learn a ton of backstory and if you're into like games that tell stories, then you'll really like this one cuz that's what this is about. I am definitely I don't have the patience for that. I don't even have the time for that. So I'm more of an action guy, which you'll see with some of the games that I'll show you here that I have in my collection. I did have a much larger PSP collection, but I wound up selling a lot of it. Um, but I'm very tempted to get back into collecting for the PSP. Um, it's just one of those, like I said, it's one of those handhelds that is just really fun. It's not super expensive and you can dive into. Um, so I'm going to share with you nine games that I have in my collection. Some of these you've probably already seen before. If you're new to the channel, then um, these will be um, games that are new um, or probably that you haven't seen me share before. Um, but these are all going to be like action games for the most part um, and games that I think you'll really enjoy. Now, the first batch of games are going to be games that came from Capcom. Capcom had a series like on the PSP where... They did like a lot of remakes and released them on the PSP. I had a lot more of those in my collection, including like the Capcom collection volumes one and two. Um, but I wound up selling those. And it's just, they, you know, they, they wound up just throwing a lot of their like legacy, more well-known games onto the PSP. Um, I'll go over with you the three that I kept. The first one that I kept was the Power Stone collection um which is basically power stone one and two these were two games these are two like arena style fighting games that um were released on the dreamcast the first power stone was only like a one-on-one -on -one, if i'm not mistaken but you fought like in a room so it, it almost had like a smash bros feel to it um and then when power stone 2 came out you could get up to four players going at it which was sick because that definitely had more of a smash bros feel um at the time i don't think smash bros had like the super moves yet um because was brawl out yeah i don't think you were able to do supers in brawl yet i don't think the supers came on sorry not brawl melee so i think melee was was the smash bros game that was out at the time because you have super smash bros and you have smash bros melee and you, have, and you have smash bros brawl brawl was the first smash bros that i think where you could get like the um like the smash ball or whatever it is and like do a super move um but prior to that like you didn't have any special moves like any super moves in smash bros the cool thing about power stone was that it was an arena style fighter where when you collected four stones your character your main character went like super saiyan mode and transformed into a character that had more powerful like standard attacks but then you but it was like on a timer so you could just just do a bunch of standard attacks until the power stone energy ran out or you could do up to two super moves um before the power stone um, energy ran out really the smartest way to use it in my opinion was to do a super move then do like a couple of attacks and then like right at the very end do another super move that was how i maximized the stones but anyway um if you play power stone you know you know how it could be um very 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 fun game um if you've never heard of this i would say check it out this is definitely one that i would recommend you trying on the psp um it's definitely more fun on the dreamcast because this is what it's way more fun to play this game with other people um but that's gonna take us back to the couch co-op days which i don't think we're in anymore i think we're long past the couch co-op days and uh this isn't one of those games that i think you could play like in an online competitive format so if you're ever with some friends and someone whips out the Dreamcast, try Power Stone. But if you want to just experience the game, then yeah, definitely try the Power Stone collection because you get both games in one. So really good pick up here. Um, next up, um, you've got Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. This has to be like the hardest version of Ghouls and Ghosts I've ever owned in my collection. This is like super hard. Um, but you do get the, like they added some more elements in this one um like i think you get like more powers in this one like as you like up your armor um you can do like more special moves you get more powers um um more magic potions and things like that that you can use to amplify your attacks so 
um it like it is the, the name says it for itself right ultimate ghosts and goblins so you can definitely do more with king arthur but it's definitely harder like it's a lot harder um i've played this game to the point of frustration and then i just like put it away before i wind up breaking my psp because it is really hard um but it's a fun one and i don't know if this released on any other platforms outside of the psp ultimate ghosts and goblins if it did let me know down in the comments but this is another really cool um capcom game on the psp that i would definitely check out last up is um street fighter alpha 3 max now this is the one um capcom game that i kept kept in my collection that i never opened for whatever reason mostly because i played street fighter alpha on so many different platforms from the playstation dreamcast game boy i mean they really street fighter alpha 3 on like a lot of platforms um but i'm sure that there are like different features that you get in this one um that you don't get in some of the others um it, it was cool and i do have this on the game boy advance as well it is cool playing um street fighter alpha 3 on the game boy the only whack part about playing it on the game boy advance is that you don't get any of like the voice like voiceovers you know and things like that um like as you're going about selecting your character and your levels and stuff like that um and that those voiceovers just amplified the arcade experience so this is one that was huge in the arcade when street fighter alpha 3 came out in the arcade it was it was a big deal so um but this is one that uh i would definitely recommend as well on the playstation portable very cool game I, like i said i kept mine sealed all right now if you follow the channel or if you're new to the channel you may not know I am a huge fan of shoot 'em ups and I have to have at least one shoot 'em up on every console that I own. And I had a few on the I think I had a couple on the PSP, but the one that I kept in my collection is the Gradius collection. And um that's just something that you're going to see on the PlayStation Portable is that it's it's a great way of getting a bunch of games on one disc because they they just threw a lot of collections at this at this um at this handheld console. Um in some ways, I think that folks were just lazy to make new games for it. <laughs> but, um, and don't get me wrong, PSP does have some sick exclusive games, but they did throw a lot of like remakes and collections at it. So the Gradius collection is one. Now, I am a fan of the Gradius series. I just didn't feel like collecting all the Gradius games because while I do like shoot 'em ups, the Gradius shoot 'em ups aren't like the most dynamic or fun ones to me they're more of like a basic style shoot 'em up game um so i chose this one because it includes like all the gradius games in one so gradius one through i think four and then you get gradius gaiden so that's just a great value i mean that many shoot 'em up games in one in one disc um is actually really great um you know and then just a, like a lot of different play modes and things like that so that's the other cool thing about getting the collections is, is that you just get a bunch of different play modes and things that you can take advantage of so really good one here um next up you have uh ease 7 if you're a fan of ease 8 i could say e i would say ease but ease 8 uh sorry e7 um if you're a fan of ease 8 on the switch this is one that you'll definitely want to try um it kind of this one plays a lot like ease 8 um just on the psp and it gives you a little bit more a little bit more of that backstory so um it, it's very very similar to ease 8 as a matter of fact so this is a really cool um action rpg that you can take advantage of on the psp never really played a ton of this one like i said i'm not a huge rpg fan but because this one has the hack and slash elements to it that's what makes this one a blast to play um definitely would recommend it if you're a fan of the e series or if you like easy on the switch really really cool game we got another collection on our hands so metal slug anthology i'm a huge fan of run and gun shooters again if you follow the channel you'll know that and this is just another great way to get a ton of Metal Slug games all in one shot. So Metal Slug 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and Metal Slug X, which I have a personal... Um... Oh, phone died. Sorry about that, guys. But anyway, so Metal Slug um, uh, X is definitely one that holds a special nostalgic place in, in my heart because this is the one that I played in the arcade a ton. Um, I actually beat Metal Slug X in the arcade using only two quarters you know how hard that is 
um, especially in the arcade. They put that thing on like extra, extra hard. But Metal Slug is just one of those games where you have to memorize the levels. You learn where all the secret um, um, POWs are because in Metal Slug, like you, you got to free the prisoners of war. Um, so you kind of learn where they all are. Some of them are like held in secret spots. There are different like parts of the game where you like shoot into nothingness. Like you, like you're shooting at things in the background and then they unlock more gems and more like different items that give you more points. Um, and if you play Metal Slug, you're, you're well aware of all these little heat hidden secret things. My favorite part about Metal Slug, which it sucks because I always seem to like die right after I get this guy, but you always did and like one certain or no every one or so levels you'll get a pow that actually stays with you and um he throws a hadouken which is like super powerful that hadouken like destroys everything and if you can manage to stay alive and keep that dude with you as you get to the boss it makes beating the bosses so much easier so that pow that throws the hadouken for those of you who know about metal slug you know what i'm talking about that guy is like a lifesaver so Metal Slug is cool, man. Um, a really good one to have on the PSP. Definitely recommend it. Now we're going to get into some PSP exclusives. And if these games are not exclusive, let me know down in the comments. I've just never heard of the, any of these games being released on any other system. So first is Garumin, A Monstrous Tale. Um, this one's a cool one. You play this girl whose parents are like um, archaeologists, I think. And um, you get like this drill, which allows you to dig and like you're in this city that's been taken over by like these shadow cute looking monsters. And um, it's just like an open action, like open world adventure game with like RPG elements to it. It's kind of cutesy, but it's still really fun. It's this was like one of the better games. This is like one of the more standout games on the PSP. So this this game is definitely uh, not whack. This is one that I would definitely recommend you try out. I know it looks cutesy and stuff, but this is a good one. If you're a fan of like action RPG games, um, it has a pretty cool story too. I got a little bored with it after a while. Um, just could have been the timing. I was into a lot of games at the time. Never really had a chance to pick this back up. But as I do get back into the PSP, this is one that I would definitely recommend you check out. Um, here goes another one that I think is exclusive to the PSP. I don't know if this was released anywhere else, but this game, um, is, I think this is exclusive to the PSP. They really need to do a second part of this. They need to really re-release this, either re-release it or like do a part two to this on something PS4, PS5, but this game deserves a second go. Um, but this is Ken Cabancho, badass rumble. Um, if you like 3D beat em ups, which I'm a huge fan of 3D beat em ups. This takes 3D beat em up action to a whole new level. And this is like really sick for it being on the PSP. Um, you can you learn different moves and different combos as you move throughout the game. Um, a lot of NPCs um, just, you know, like it's just the storyline is is pretty pretty sick it's it's really when i say npcs i say that to say that it's pretty interactive um and it just it feels larger than a psp game to be honest with you it's it's a really cool beat em up um you can develop your character it's got a really cool storyline like i said if you like 3d beat em ups you'll definitely want to check this one out i've actually been saving this one because this is one of those games that feels like a treat and i want to give it like a lot of my attention so this is like one I would say for like when I'm taking a lot of time off and I know I'm going to have a lot of free time on my hands. I could dive into this. This is one that like I feel like really deserves my attention. I don't want to pick it up and put it down. I started to play it and I was like, oh, no, this is too sick. I need to like like really dive into it. So but this is one that I would definitely recommend to um, look, be on the lookout for this one. If you're if you're thinking about collecting for the PSP, can Cabancho badass rumble is definitely the way to go. And then last but not least, um, Chili Con Carnage. Chili Con Carnage. So Chili Con Carnage is a pretty cool game. This is like, um, I've said this before, but this is like Grand Theft Auto Vice City meets Max Payne meets like just comedy. This is a very funny action-based um, just 3D shoot-em-up game, kind of. Um, very cool graphics. Um, I feel like this is one of those games that kind of like maximizes the PSP graphics. Um, and if you're into like, like I said, like games like Max Payne or Grand Theft Auto, you will like this one because you can like steal cars, you can drive cars, you can, 
beat people up you can you know shoot them up obviously it's got just like a blast it's just like action all day long on this one and i think this is another one that is also exclusive to the psp i could be wrong i could be wrong y'all can let me know down in the comments let me know if um, i'm wrong on any of these but also let me know if you've ever played any of these or if you've heard of any of these um, but these are just some of the games in the PSP collection. Again, these are like all very fun games, all games that I've spent a considerable amount of time playing with the exception of like Ease and Ken Cabancho. But um, these are games that I would definitely recommend. Let me know if you have any games that you would recommend on the PSP. And I am going to go now and watch game three of the NBA Finals. I think it's on tonight. It's either on tonight or tomorrow night. Hopefully it's on tonight because I really want to see them play. Um, but if not, I will definitely catch you tomorrow. It's the Y2K Collector. Take it easy.